What you guys got another video here for you. What does a budget gaming PC cost? A lot of people can't afford the Bleeding Edge RTX 3070, 3080 and 3090 graphics cards. Now you're probably looking at a minimum of 500 to $600, which is something like this. Now the case on this one is a little bit on the expensive side. You could use something like a $60 case, which will then save you a bit more money. You can trim back on say the motherboard and get yourself a basic motherboard you can buy a used rx 580 or 570 graphics card which will save you a bit more money and again you will be able to buy something like this and use this for gaming you'll have no problems playing all triple a listed games with something like this sort of setup now remember we're just talking about entry level gaming pcs here to get you in on the ground floor to play games at this sort of level if you want to step up your game, you're going to have to obviously spend a bit more money on the GPU. Now, you can obviously go up in class by buying a brand new 1650 Super, which is going to cost you around about $160. We can buy a 1660 Super that's going to cost you around about $250. And that will pretty much play just about every AAA listed game you throw at it. Obviously, you're going to struggle with games like uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and things like that. But we're talking about general gaming here. And this PC is probably going to be all you're going to need. Now, we'll take a look at some price lists in a minute for used and new PCs. And we'll also take a look at some gaming and see how it performs as well. I will say that when you see a PC online and you're looking to buy it, then you want to really sort of look at what parts you're getting for your money. Like this build here, you can adapt and change this and make this even cheaper. You can change out the case, which is £129 to buy, and make that probably around about £50 to save even more money. If you wanted to go L budget and lose the RGB, you can probably get yourself a £30-£40 case, and it's still going to play exactly the same. It's just going to look a little bit different, and it won't look as nice. But again, if it's all about saving money, then that's what you can do. You could also cheap out on the motherboard a little bit more and also look for used parts like a used graphics card. So let me give you a rough idea of what you're looking at here. $634 is what you're seeing on the screen right now. You've got yourself a case. You've got a Ryzen 3 3100. If you want to upgrade that to something like a 3600, by all means, if you've got the budget to go for that, then you can swap that out with a 3600. Same thing for the graphics card. You've got a 1650 Super. If it's not quite enough for what you need, you can always go and get yourself a 1660 Super. And if that's not enough, you just keep adding on. The more you go up, the more money you spend. It's pretty simple. Now, this is an A520 motherboard at £89.99. You can still get these uh, A520 motherboards for around about $60, depending on which one you buy. The same thing will go for your power supply. You may want to cheap out on your power supply. Don't do it. This is probably the lowest limit that I would ever go for, which is a bronze level. Again, you can buy white label ones at around about the same sort of price. Try to get yourself a branded power supply that's going to last you. And if you need more power, then obviously you're going to have to spend more money. You've got yourself a little small SSD here, team group, nothing too fancy. And you can always add in a mechanical drive, like a one terabyte for all your game storage. 3600 speed DDR4, non-RGB. If you want RGB, you're going to have to spend a bit more money. Just remember when you're upgrading any of the parts, it's going to reflect in the price. Now, looking at used parts here, you can see this is a Xeon E5-1620 version 2 processor, which is a pretty powerful processor for its uh, day. But again, it's used, but you can pick these up for $29.99. You can pick yourself up a Sapphire Nitro uh, Radeon RX 580, 4GB version for around about $120, he's asking in here. And you can probably get them cheaper. This is a HP Z420 workstation motherboard to take that Xeon processor. You could drop it into something like this or go and buy one of those cheaper uh, unknown uh, type of motherboards and slot it into one of those boards you can go and get yourself uh, 16 gigabytes of server grade memory and then you can buy your hp uh, cooler here for around about 16 dollars and again you've got the eatx supported uh, 
case, which is what you're going to need for that big, large motherboard, a cable for your power supply, and you'll have to buy a cheap power supply. And then I'm going to tack on a little second hand SSD and also a drive. And you're looking at around about $384 for all those used parts. Now, there's tons of used parts you can choose from, different uh, sort of architectures. But again, this is the Xeon sort of build architecture. And I was just showing you basically what you can expect to pay for used parts. And these are going to be old server grade uh, parts. Again, really tired and old and $384. And it's probably been a bit lean there. It's probably closer to $400. But again, for another couple of hundred bucks, you're going to get yourself a brand new system which will perform probably better than that old Xeon uh, processor will. But some people insist on buying used parts and they love spending their money on used parts. And if you do want to, you may find yourself a slightly cheaper deal than this. But just giving you an example of what to expect when you're buying used parts. Personally, I prefer to buy new and you've got a much better upgradability uh, on that newer system. So let's take a look at some benchmarks here for that system that you was just looking at previously. So we're using the green PC here with a Ryzen 5 3400G and also an RX 574 gigabyte card in here with 16 gigs of RAM in it, 3600 speed. And you can see it's having no problems at all playing Grand Theft Auto 5. Now you might see the odd micro stutter and that is because of uh, an issue with this game. For some reason, it didn't like uh, me running it at full tilt with all these frame rates you can see the massive frame rates up there 167 what i did as i put it on virtual sync and it went away and it capped it at 60 frames per second but i'd stopped having any artifacting or anything like that and i think it's something to do with uh, the actual game itself it's not the card itself struggling it's just the game itself you can see it's sputtery smooth now no problem whatsoever and that was with virtual sync on now i know putting virtual sync on is going to cap the frames to 60 frames per second but at the end of the day it's not a first person shooter it's a story mode and again if it stops any of that uh, tearing then that is probably your best way to do it it's just going to be a much more better experience you can see it's buttery smooth no problems whatsoever but i do think it's some sort of setting or direct x version that I was using on this game that made it do that otherwise it would be normally pretty much buttery smooth uh gameplay so let's move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider here. You can see the settings I'm going to use on the screen here. These sort of games, it really doesn't matter whether you are playing with Virtual Sync on and you're capping it at 60 frames per second. It's really not going to make much difference because it's not a first-person type shooter game. It's just a story mode type game. But as long as you're getting really steady frame rates, that's all that really matters. But you can see here, really smooth, no problems whatsoever. And again, um, there's there's no issues here with this particular type of game. No jerkiness here. No stuttering. Really nice play. And this is on a really cheap budget sort of gaming PC. So you don't need to spend vast amounts of money to enjoy gaming on a PC. And that's my point. So let's move up here and do a little jump up here. You might get the odd little stutter here and there. And that's to be expected at this sort of level. And this game is not a an easy game to play for some PCs because obviously the intensity of the graphics. But you can tweak all these settings to suit your needs. I'm just showing you basically it can handle these. So 1920 by 1080, and we're going to turn off Hairworks in The Witcher because this is another quite taxing game. We've got it on Ultra here, as you can see. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, have a game on this to see whether there's any issues playing this sort of game with this sort of budget system. So now we're running the RX 574 gigabyte card here and we're running on ultra settings. Now I probably would only use uh, the high settings for this particular card on this game. And we're going through some water here, running around, getting around about 58 to 60 frames per second, which is good enough to play uh, games like this. But as I said, I will probably only have this on high settings and turn down uh, sort of shadowing and things like that because it's that that's going to eat the card and uh, make the frames drop right down so running about here you might see the odd uh, micro stutter and things like that that's just general for this type of card with these sort of settings you are pushing it uh, to the limits so you can see that odd little micro stutter there and there 
And the way you fix that is by basically turning down the graphics a little bit and playing around with your graphics settings so you get a much more uh, smoother experience. And you can remember we're running on 1920 by 1080. Um, Hairworks is on low. And you can see here, shadows quality is going to be turned down now. I'm going to turn these down to high now from ultra to see if that makes a difference. Well, it will make a difference. You should get more frames, but it should uh, take a bit of hard work off the graphics card here. And again, you can go into more detail with your sort of tweaking here. I'm just showing you basically what you can expect from this uh, sort of card here. So let's go ahead and move around and see what that feels like. You can already see we're getting a few more frames now. We're in the 70s, near 80, 80 frames. And we're in a, a village here. So you are getting more frames up to 90 odd, 100, 112. They'll go back up and down as you'd expect. So we're in the tavern here. Again, it can handle that no problem at all, as you can see there. So it just depends on what sort of machine you're looking at buying, but you can still play AAA listed games uh, no problem at all with this particular type of graphics card. Just going to run Heaven Benchmark here to give you some idea of what to expect, and you can see uh, minimum 34.8, maximum 149.8, and that is the FPS score 94.5. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Big special thanks to all these people you see on the screen who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate your support. Thanks again. Now, also, this machine will play games like first-person shooters like Valorant, PUBG, CSGO, uh, Fortnite, all those sort of games. If that's what you want to play, it will play those no problems whatsoever. And again, we also looked at some used market uh, PC parts now, you have to do a bit of research on those. Some people are selling complete rubbish, and it's not worth spending a lot of money on those parts. You don't know how reliable they are, and also there's not much upgradability path for those older systems. So bear that in mind when you're dropping a lot of money on used parts. You might as well buy brand new. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you found this information useful. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.